You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Hello, everybody. My name is Jason Piercy, and this is Out of the Fog. Speaking of fog, I was supposed to interview a bunch of really exciting, cool people from this big fancy place called Disney Studios. Now, I still got some good interviews in, as you'll see in a little bit, but fog kept them from landing right until the very last second. And what were we doing? Well, we were at the red carpet premiere of Peter and Wendy. And of course, that's the, the Disney production, the new revamped live action Peter Pan, parts of which were filmed in our glorious, beautiful province just a little while ago during COVID. Now, we were waiting there and they were like, well, the planes are stuck, they can't get in, the planes are stuck, they can't get in. And then just as we were getting ready to shut stuff down, because there were people around, it was a buzz, it was really cool. Just as we were getting ready to shut it down, somebody gets a text, beep boop. The producer just landed, he's on his way, will be there shortly, and then the premier showed up, and a whole bunch of other really interesting conversations happened. Anyway, so we got all of it here, and we're gonna share it to you when we come back from this break. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. All right, so we were at this red carpet premiere, okay? And <laughs> it's really exciting. And my favorite part, I think, I mean, I met a Disney executive and you'll, you'll see, he actually looks like Prince Charming's grandfather or something. He's got the hair, like he screams Disney. <laughs> so, but that wasn't the coolest part for me. The coolest part was probably that there were a bunch of kids there. And, and these children were extras in a Disney film. And they were at this red carpet premiere and you could see the joy and the excitement and the, the pride and their parents were there taking pictures of them. And it was absolutely, it was brilliant. It made, it was, I was full of the warm and the fuzzies. So what we're gonna do now is we've got a whole bunch of stuff about that that we, we want to show you, but I wanna wrap it up in the, the trailer for Peter and Wendy. So you can see bits of what the movie is and then filled up in the middle with all of this beautiful conversation where a lot of people had a lot of really good things to say about our province. And I learned some stuff from our premier and also from our finance minister and from another one of our honorable ministers also. So there's a lot in here and I'm excited about it and I hope you enjoy it. But first, let's start off with part of the trailer of Peter and Wendy. Enjoy. I don't want to grow up. I want things to stay the way they are. Can't stop time, Wendy. Whether you like it or not. Did it. I don't think that's a bug. She is a fairy. Are you Peter Pan? Were you expecting someone else? I can oh. Is that Neverland? Is this everything you dreamed of? I could never have dreamed of this! Place. No rules, no schools, no bedtimes, and most of all, no growing up. Are you Wendy? Did 
can do. Peter. Peter! Peter! Captain, it's Peter Pa. Standing here with the Honorable Pam Parsons, Minister of, well, Women, and, Women gender and gender equality, and out of uh, your district, of course, being Harbor Grace and Port of Grave. Places where there are boats and ships, and some of them stuck out in the water, like in Harbor Grace. <laughs> Wouldn't it be yeah. cool if Captain Hook, what was his ship was the Kyle? <laughs> well, I tell you, it certainly would be. And we have the Kyle. It's an iconic boat, of course, that's been uh, stuck in Harbor Grace for quite some time. Um, and also, just down the road, we have Port of Grave. We have a number of boats there, there as well. <laughs> and they look real pretty in Christmas time. Absolutely. Well, it, I mean, don't smell as pretty, but they look really pretty. So, so much has happened through COVID when the rest of the world started to see not just how beautiful we are, but how welcome we are and how safe we are. And all of this film stuff just kind of happened, right? Absolutely. And do you feel, is there an air, like a vibe in the air that that's a thing that we can maybe elaborate on? Maybe you should be going for like, like the Minister of Tourism and such things next time. <laughs> well, I tell you, we have such a gem here in our beautiful province. Uh, maybe we're the best kept, kept secret, but maybe we're not that much of a secret because we are world renowned, too, for example, for our Port of Grey boat lighting. Uh, we're known world round for that, so um, that beautiful spectacle. And I mean, our landscaping, our natural beauty that we have, and of course, our people. Uh, wherever we go, when people find out you're a Newfoundlander, Labradorian, people are intrigued. Um, so, you know, our people are our greatest asset and our resource, but we have so much natural beauty to come and see. And then we have a large province. Uh, geographically, Newfoundland and Labrador, we're bigger than the Maritimes combined. So there's lots to see and do here. Absolutely, <laughs> and especially Labrador. People have no idea. And they don't call it the big land because it's little. Like, it's not like, it's not like your massive friend that you nicknamed Tiny. The big land is big. <laughs> and it takes all day to drive across the island. So no wonder they were able to find such beautiful places to do some filming for, you know, Peter Pan and Wendy. But I mean, they didn't show up in Port Grave. And the rocks down there, and the beaches, and I mean, they should have, really. Well, yeah, absolutely. And we're a, a natural, you know, fishing district. And of course, we've got Bay Roberts, and we've got other communities such as Spaniards Bay and Upper Island Cove. Harbor Grace is also a lot of history, a lot of pirate history. You're talking about Captain Hook. We have a lot of pirate history after Mr. Peter, Peter Easton. Easton, yes. Absolutely. I mean, maybe what we can do See, now, now it's a joint idea because everybody can see it. Perhaps we should write <laughs> something together that where Peter Easton... I'm down. I'm down. And we can even put a music bed to it, you know? Play a little guitar, a little singing, a little piano. I can play the guitar. Right? Can All you right. sing? I can't. Well, I like to say I can't sing. Yes, absolutely. I enjoy doing it. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to turn the camera off. Myself and the minister are going to go write a song. And uh, we'll be back after that. All right. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. All right. Well, I mean... She's not Peter Pan, and she's not Captain Hook, and she's not Wendy, but everybody probably knows her just as much. Of course, this is Siobhan Cody, the Honorable Siobhan Cody, Deputy Premier and Minister of Finance. So, first things first, how much money did we make off of Disney? <laughs> Well, we certainly are very, very pleased to have. I don't have that figure off the top of my head, but I can tell you there was a lot of activity here, a lot of people uh, working in the province, um, a lot of small business, of course, obviously involved as well. So very happy to have Disney here. You know, we have an incredible, extensive uh, film crews in the yes. province, and people don't really realize how deep our talent pool really is. I know my dad was very heavily involved in the theater industry and the film industry uh, for decades, and uh, he would be so pleased to see this now with Disney here. Uh, but, you know, it's it's so important to Newfoundland and Labrador. It's a burgeoning new industry. That's why the government of Newfoundland and Labrador is supporting it to, you know, to encourage it so that we can have some depth of, uh, of projects in the pipeline. So really happy to be here tonight to see this. I've seen the clips. I'm sure a lot of the viewing audience has seen that incredible clip. I actually went out to Spillers Cove this last summer oh, yeah? uh, just to see it because it was, you know, the, the views are incredible. Well, I mean, you can see why people who are world class in their film production and I mean, it may have us being such a safe place to be during a global health pandemic may have shine a spotlight on us, but now that we're visible and highlighted by a studio like Disney, I mean, I can't imagine we won't see more world class people just want to flock to here. I mean, we'll be the new 
Jurassic Park Hawaii, for sure. <laughs> well, definitely what you're starting to see is more people understanding the, the opportunity here in Newfoundland and Labrador. So they're seeing it on other productions that are uh, that are being shown as well, like Hudson and Rex, I saw it this afternoon on, on the television. Um, there are a lot of other productions that are coming here because of the talent that we have in this province and because of the scenery, quite frankly. And so we have it all here in Newfoundland and Labrador. We should be very, very proud of that. I know I know all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are proud. I, I, I can tell you it's very proud to be here with the with the you know kind of the the glow of this sure. evening and I'm looking forward to many, many more. Pardon, pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> I had a conversation with um uh, Minister Parsons just a little while ago and together her and I, I decided because she's out in the Harbour Grace Port of Grave area that we're going to make a Peter Easton pirate movie about the Kyle and I just wonder like do you want in on that? Absolutely I could be the princess. <laughs> well, <laughs> no seriously I think it's a good story to be told right? though. Why not? It is that a good is story. a very good story to be told yeah. and I think that there are a lot of people that don't know about what the story of of, uh, of the pirates and the, the story of the princess that's and right. the story that's the, of, of what's happened in that area so telling those stories would be incredibly important and we've got the talent and we have the scenery to do it. And now you heard our finance minister for the province and deputy premier say to me personally that the government is going to fund it and I can make that movie. So thank you very much. Didn't quite say fund it. <laughs> what I did say was encouraging you to do it. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, Thanks thank for taking a moment. Thank you very much and thank you. If there is an antithesis to the Lost Boys in Never Never Land, it's got to be the homegrown you know, boy from Petty Harbor yeah. that everybody loves. If there's an antithesis to a lost boy, it's Alan Doyle. Yeah, it was great to be here. What a fun night. What a fun thing to be a part of. And what a, like, what a feather in the hat for the province and for, uh, for uh, the film industry in particular. It's fantastic. So, speaking of film industry, uh, you've dabbled. Yeah. I don't know, dabble, I don't know, dabble's not really a fair word because yeah. you've outright done this. It's funny, yeah. Well, well, Jim Whitaker, who's one of the guys for Disney now, was, it's funny, I, I met Jim 10, 15 years ago, because oh, he yeah? was one of the producers on Robin Hood. Oh, really? Yeah, you saw him almost every day. <laughs> like, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, can we re-edit this? Because Jude Law, honestly, you'd be a way better hope. <laughs> I'll take any gig. That was great. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I must say, like, the, uh, I saw the trailer, like everyone did, I think, from Newfoundland and Labrador. It was, it's kind of thrilling, right, to see your own backyard and, and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I love it. And it's not, it's not obviously depicted though either, right? Yeah. And I think what's special about that is that, I mean, I'm 40. The first yeah. time I saw um, that gross morn was like two and a half years ago. Yeah. So like we've got a big place that we've yeah. seen none percent of. And yeah. I think this opens it up, not just to other people to see what Newfoundland offers, but to us locally. To us locally, 100%, and like, but like it's, it's the global stage that a film like this provides for the province. That's like, it's just incredible. Like, if people get, everyone who watches this movie is going to go, where is that? I mean, especially like we, since we can all Google stuff while we're watching television shows. I always say the same. I, I don't think I watch any show now without going, where was this shot? And I look it up. You know, I always do because you know, I travel so much and I want to know where it is. And uh, it's just great. And it's you know, you know, it's 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 basically free. It, you know, the, if, you know, you get the guys here and it just runs forever. You know, and it's just it's such a brilliant investment on behalf of the government and support them 100% for getting behind the film and television industry. And my buds, you know, you know, uh, the late great Paul Pope and and, and of course uh, Hako and, and and Mark and all the gang, yeah. like and, and Rick Mercer and so many others and all the Sextons. I mean, they've been working at this for a long time, and this is like a, you know, this is this is the culmination. Don't make no mistake. This is a culmination of a lot of hard work for a long time. For a for long a time of, yeah. for people to get this going. You know, I mean, I wish I could brag. That the music industry has an equivalent, that you know, but we don't, you know, and the and the the fact that like the I, that I think a, we can hold a, on now. A platform for like in this regard. There has mean. been a couple of bands, small local bands from here, who did okay globally. Uh, there's I uh, can't uh, for the life of me. Uh, no, I, mean, I the, can't. The, the thing, <laughs> I mean, the thing, the thing I mean is like this. This thing like runs like globally, you know, yeah. and like, and, and it's just, it's just an incredible thing, and how quickly this, you know, it, it, the, the the math starts to make sense to do it, you know, and it's like it's incredible. It's a real feather in the hat for the gang. I'll take props for the uh, music industry at another day. <laughs> Today is all about the film. Fair enough. Appreciate it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Alan Doyle. <laughs> No introductions needed. Well, I mean, I'm Jason. You've seen me before. This, of course, is our beloved premier, 
Mr. Andrew Fury. Doctor, how are you? I'm good, how are you, Jason? Uh, we're gonna skip how I'm okay, doing. I'm right. doing. We've been talking about how I'm doing for a long time. However, I will say to the audience, the first thing he said was come over to shake my hand and ask how I was, so thank you, sir. Well, now, to the task at hand. I mean, when you decided to run for Premier, yep. did, was it because you thought you would be at a Disney Studios movie gala premiere red carpet event? No, of course not, but I would tell you when we did run, when I did want to run and step up, I did believe in the film and TV industry here, and it's, it was one of the things that was a plank in my leadership platform, and it's something that we've com committed to, so it is pretty special as Premier to see something that was a bit of an idea come to a policy, yeah. and now here today to see Disney, Disneyland in Newfoundland and Labrador. A movie about pirates and having a plank <laughs> and some joke about walking it, but you don't have to because no, we I'm made it happen. I'm not going to walk any planks here tonight, <laughs> I can assure you. So it seems to me that now, and I've mentioned this in an earlier conversation I had um, with the Deputy Premier, of yeah. course, Siobhan Cody, um, that the eyes are on us now. We were visible before. But now to a larger scale, and I'm assuming we're, we're, we want to push that. That's something that's relatively untapped for us. Oh, definitely. That's why, I mean, it's, I see it as a renewable resource for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. We're creative people. We're a culture built on storytelling. And right now, the world is starved for content with all these different platforms. And, and we know that we have a remarkable storytelling capacity here. We have incredible scenery. We have incredible storytellers. We have incredible artists. And we have a backdrop that nowhere else can offer. So Newfoundland and Labrador is very much on all the production facilities and the production houses on their radar. And I'll tell you something else that is interesting. Uh, when we visited them, them in uh, last June, actually, we visited Netflix, we visited Warner Brothers. Something else that's, uh, in, that comes up all the time is our electricity grid here. And as you know, we're becoming more and more green, and these production facilities are demanding more and more to know what the carbon footprint is. So we're yet again more attractive than some other jurisdictions. So I guess they probably get a bunch of credits that make it easier for them to film and wow. Well, they're all looking, their investors are looking at car their carbon footprint for each production and we can offer a lower carbon footprint than some other jurisdictions in Canada and around the world. Is now a good time to talk about who pays for that? <laughs> or maybe we'll leave that, we'll leave that for another conversation? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Premier. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, absolutely, I hope you do too and I hope everyone at home gets a chance to see it. It's going to be spectacular. Wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, um, producer Peter Pan and Wendy, Mr. Jim Whittaker. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank you for coming here. I have a couple of things to say. Please. One, you look like a Disney character. Like you got you got better hair than me. Like you you look you look like Prince Charming grew up. Oh, That's like you. what Thank I got you. going I'll, on here. I'll, I'll, I'll let my wife know. That's very nice of you. I appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. So we, nice thank you. See, yeah. first person. Jim is such yeah. a nice guy, not just a producer. <laughs> so um, to take something to not a, lar not a small province, because Newfoundland and Labrador geographically is massive, but to, to a small group of people who had not previously been featured on as gigantic a stage yeah. has a massive impact on us here locally. That's great. Because Disney certainly isn't small. Sure. As, I don't know if you knew, yes. but like it's kind of big. <laughs> yeah. um, have, have we got our foot in the door here now? Like you got more coming, Jim? Yeah, I mean, we had a wonderful time here, and the crew was amazing. Super passionate, super talented. We had been working in Vancouver and came here, and, and the, everything that's Neverland on the outside is, is Newfoundland, right? So it was, it was beautiful, and, the, and everybody was great. So, you know, for us, the possibility of being here and working with the crew at that high of a level, I, I can only say that it was a great experience for us, and so I imagine it'll be a great experience for others, or I certainly come back, of course, I would love it. Um, well, I mean, we got our headline, everything that's never Neverland on the outside is Newfoundland. So, yes. I mean, I don't know, I don't know if I can Faroe even... Islands in there too, I have yeah. to say respectfully, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, no... I'm gonna edit that part out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but, but uh, truthfully, um, you know, we came here with our actors and we really, all the exterior scenes uh, with the actors uh, were done in Newfoundland and it was great. And it was the Neverland that David Lowry wanted, our director. And uh, we immediately knew. 
and so uh, we were grateful to be here. That's yeah. incredible. Thank you yeah. so much, sir. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. And, and I hope you enjoy the show that you definitely have seen none of so far. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen it a few times, but I can't wait to watch it with this audience. It's great to watch it with an audience. Wonderful. So, yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Never say his name. Just like old times. All your times are old, Captain. <laughs> Come on! Everyone hang on! Did you hear that? That is one big... <laughs> to grow up. Like, <laughs> and I, I'm excited, not, but for so many different reasons. For, for one, that movie is going to be incredible. I cannot wait to, to show it to my little girl and like let her see that magic and let her see that things, like magic, it's magic. And a child only has that for so long, right? So once, once they get to a certain place where they don't see the magic anymore, you, that's real hard to get back. And that's almost the gist of the story of Peter Pan and Never Never Land and The Lost Boys, just the whole thing. Like, magic is there as you believe that it's there. And I can't wait to, to watch that movie with my little girl, uh, who is old enough to watch it, just so you know. But also, can we talk about how we are now front and center as a province in film and television production as somewhere that it is it it works for all of their budgets for a bunch of reasons we are an incredibly beautiful place we are filled with some of the most talented people in film and movie production like it's just we're really really fortunate and i'm feeling so much gratitude today i know maybe i'm talking a lot about that but the opportunity to see all of this and see the kids involved and it's it was just heartwarming and now what i want to show you is your typical Newfoundland Labrador tourism commercial. And the reason that I want you to see this is because as you're watching it, you'll, you'll be able to see what the rest of the world sees when they look at these things. Because oftentimes, and I do this when I go home with my parents, I drive down into Norman's Cove by going down over the hill and I see the ocean and I see Chapel Head and I see the Tolt and I'm like, wow, I grew up here. It's beautiful, and I never appreciated it. And I think we do that every day. We sleep on how gorgeous our province is. So have a look at this trailer, enjoy it, and, and imagine it's not where you're from. You're not from here. And just think about how it feels to look at that place. Enjoy. Okay, did you do it? Did you do it the way that I said to do it? Imagine this place as somewhere you've never heard of before. How beautiful is it? What does it feel like? Would you love to go there? Well, that's what the producer from Disney, Mr. Jim Whittaker, that's what he was talking about. When, when he looks at that commercial, he sees a real world, real live Neverland. 
the, it, it's the epitome of it. And even in our own commercials, without ever thinking about the Peter Pan, Wendy connection, even in our own commercials that our province makes for us to get people to come here, we talk about how magical that land is. And in the trailer for Peter and Wendy, you see they bust straight out of Big Ben, right in London, and phew, glass everywhere, and it's a blink, and they're in Neverland. They're in Newfoundland. Newfoundland and Labrador, we are Neverland. We are a beautiful place. And it's not just because it's scenic and it's lovely. And it's not just because we're so talented. And it's not just because the people are kind and hospitable. And it's not just because our weather is perfect. Well, I mean, I, we're, not, we're not perfect, but we are good. But it's not only those things. There's more to it. Like, in the coming years, we've got like two or three massive um, wind-powered energy projects that are coming. We have more and more offshore oil exploration. BP, one of the biggest companies in the world, is dumping a ton of money into here because they see what we have. Our future is very, very bright. If you're, if you're sitting around lately and you're thinking about how you're a lost boy because you're, you just live in Newfoundland, you're stuck here, it's too expensive, there's this, there's that, that's not where you are. That's your perception of it, but it's not where you are. Like all across Canada, and I, I turn things to real estate sometimes because it's, it's, it's a passion of mine and what I do for a living, but just to give you perspective, across Canada, the benchmark price for a house, and a benchmark price just means this is what you should be striving for, for the typical family to have a home. The Canadian average is like $715,000 and ours is barely over 300. And sure, you'll say, well, yeah, but they make a lot more money in those other places, so it's, it's, it's relative, right? Sure, it's 700, but you know, the Canadian national average for household income person is like 92,000. Okay, sure, fair. Our benchmark price is barely over 300, and our income average is just under 80. So like, <laughs> we truly are the most beautiful place in Canada to live, and we're the kindest people. The only thing we need to get under is, is like, we gotta stop drinking and smoking so much. <laughs> we gotta get in shape, we gotta be healthy, but we're a great place, and I'm really proud to be from here, and I'm really happy to have shown you all of this tonight. I hope you enjoyed more words than I usually say, and uh, they're rolling in the credits on me. It's like I'm getting the hook. Get off, Jason, get off. So we'll see you next week. I hope you have a great night. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Are you low on food? Struggling to pay the bills? Overwhelmed by life's challenges? <laughs> 